Here are three ways to maximize microclimates to help with your home orchard. Josh here. I've been growing fruit trees in the ground for 10 years. I got hundreds planted. And one of the things that I realized is that you can actually use structures and other placements of your fruit trees to increase or lower the temperatures via a microclimate. So what's a microclimate? A microclimate means a climate that's going to either be higher or lower than areas that you might have in an open field. So if you get down to five degrees, normally that microclimate might actually stay around the 10 degree mark if it's warmer or drop all the way down to zero degrees if it's colder. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of microclimates that you might encounter whenever you're planning out your home orchard. Are you ready? All right, so let's dive into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is microclimates using structures. And structures really block the northerly winds that blow in and that reduces cold damage on sensitive plants. So I've got this shed here behind me and the north side is the other side. We're looking at the south side here and it's actually going to be blocking any wind that's coming in from this direction. And what that's going to do is it's going to reduce the amount of wind and cold damage that this arctic frost tangerine is going to experience. And so it's really going to help bolster this whole area's temperature into probably up to five degrees degrees warmer in those winter months. And in terms of the plant, it's going to protect that stems and the, the trunk and all of those areas from getting that constant northerly wind with that really cold wind that's going to blow in because it's going to be going over top this structure and it's going to leave a little bit of a heat pocket in this lower area. So you can use structures to help block your primary wind to help raise the temperature and it's also going to absorb and release a little bit of uh, warm temperature areas around the structure stuff, but probably not because this is a lot of wood. All right, and that leads us to number two. Number two is utilizing passive solar heating techniques. So passive solar means that an object will absorb heat during the day and then slowly release that heat into those evening hours. So things like stone walls, brick walls, any type of masonry or rock that can be of larger substance can really absorb heat and then slowly release that into the area around it over those evening hours. Some people even use 55 gallon drums planted black to be able to help with greenhouses that can heat them through the evening hours because it's going to slowly release that heat when those are filled with water. But in this instance, I don't have that here. But if I did have a brick wall behind this, that brick wall could absorb this heat and it could release it back into the air and help bolster that temperature, which will create a microclimate around it. So if you've got a southern facing wall that's got brick, masonry, rock, anything that's going to absorb heat and release it, you can utilize that to boost your temperatures when, when it's most important, which is overnight in that area. All right. And then number three for microclimates, and this is sort of the opposite direction, is going to be avoiding frost pockets. So if you ever notice that in a field in the lowest area, you'll see fog forming down in that low point in the valley. Well, that's because all of that cold air creates a cold sink and that creates what's called frost pockets which means that those areas can be up to two to five degrees colder than the rest of the field especially on that upper part so you want to avoid planting in the lowest parts of your valleys where all of that cold air is going to accumulate and create that cold frost pocket because it's going to help your tree in terms of reducing damage to blooms uh, the cold hardiness of the tree itself and it's just going to create a better environment if you let that cold air pass through without impacting your fruit trees. So if you're in a large open area, if you're in a field, if you've got a low spot where fog normally forms, you might want to avoid planting there, especially for trees that are going to blossom early that might suffer from late season frosts damaging their blooms. If you want to learn more, make sure to follow me along this 20-day challenge that we're in where we're going over all the foundational fruit tree knowledge that you need to know to get your home orchard started. All right, I'll see you in the next video.